This is how we're going to properly document our crime scene. We have already set up the approach, how we came into the room, where our investigators are going to walk. We want to make sure that they're not walking on potential evidence. So I've already set up the approach. We've also made the scene secure. We've either put up evidence tape. Um, we have our entry logs so we know who is coming in and out of the crime scene. And then one of the most important things is we've already done our preliminary survey. We walked through our crime scene to see what we have. We walked around, we looked, we determined if we need uh, blood collection evidence, fingerprinting materials, what, what type of things we need for our scene. But now it's time to document. And then we're gonna do two things. The first thing we're going to do is photograph our crime scene. That's the first portion of document. And then the second is sketching. So let's focus on the photography. The first thing to know when you're taking your photos for uh, crime scene documentation is you're going to take a series of three photos. If you wanna be crime scene photography certified, these are the three things that you must know. You must do these. First is an overall picture, a mid-range picture, and then a close-up picture. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do those and what they look like and show you some pictures with my, my crime scene room. But before I show you the overall mid-range and close-up, um, I need to show you my setup for my camera. Now, I like uh, to have an off-camera flash on the cord. You see it's connected to my camera. Uh, some people like it with it off the camera where um, it's connected digitally and you don't have it actually attached. I like it attached because it can just hang here. Um, you do need that off-camera flash because when we're taking our photos, this is what we'll look like. Our flash is going to shoot down at about a 45 degree angle when we're taking our close-up photos, fingerprints, uh, things like that. Um, and this is kind of how I like to do it. Now, some people use the back screen. Um, this is just how I enjoy it. Uh, but you will need an off-camera flash to take good pictures. So now let's get into the uh, documentation, overall mid-range and close-up. Before I start taking my pictures, I have to document where I am, let's say this is a house, in the house. So what all I use very simply, it doesn't have to be fancy, it has to be precise. And so what I like is I just use a sticky note and I'd say where I am, this one, bedroom. So now that's my first photo, take a picture, bedroom. Now when I go in and take my series of photos, you know that all those pictures are from the bedroom, from the kitchen, bedroom one, bedroom two. It's very simple, very easy. Same for bathroom, whatever it is. But now we've taken our first photo, we're gonna head into the crime scene. Now, before I start taking my overall photographs, I have to label the corners of the room. So you can see here I have label A. Again, I'm just using sticky notes and a, and a marker. So I'm gonna do A and label all the corners of the room. I'm going to do this because I'm going to do my overall photographs from each point of the room so that I get a full 360 view of the room. I also want that for when I'm doing my sketches so I know where I'm measuring from in the room. Here's from the first corner. This is corner. what it looks like. From the second corner. Here's the third corner. You can see the evidence there. The fourth corner. And I also did one from the door just to capture everything. Now that I took my overall photographs without the placards, the evidence markers, now I'm going to go back I'm going to do overall photographs. All right, here we go with again. The evidence markers see, I can there. take, I zoomed in a little bit for you so you can see the placards, but I'm just going around the room just like I did with the others. Each corner of the room, documenting each, and here's the last one from the door. So now I have my overall photographs. Your overall photographs are just to show the jury the crime scene, try to get as much as you can. It's just to say, hey, look, this is the crime scene. This is what it looks like before I've processed. You're just giving them an overall picture, an overall view. Now, the next series of photographs you're going to take are mid-range. Mid-range photographs are the most difficult to take, not because they're technically difficult with your camera, because psychologically, they are difficult. They're not just a medium picture. They're a picture to show the relationship between two objects. And what we wanna make sure is that we're not shooting linear. 
which means when we're looking at these objects, we don't want to shoot from here. We don't want to shoot the long way going down this way. We want to try to show the relationship this way. When we're shooting our mid-range photographs, we want to be standing like this at the top and then have our two objects this way, okay, like this. I'm going to give you a demonstration of why we don't shoot linear. We don't want our evidence marked up like this. We want them like this. The reason being is because it's very difficult to tell distance when you're shooting in linear. And here's an experiment that uh, to show to demonstrate that. How far apart are these two uh, markers? They're about a foot or so. You can see that. Now, if I turn them like this, can you tell how far apart they are? If I stretch them all the way out here, look at that. You can't tell the difference of the distance. So when we're shooting our mid-range photographs, we want to have a, a solid object, a wall, or two pieces of evidence, and we're going to shoot at the top of the triangle. So I'm the camera, I'm shooting in between. Why I said that this is a difficult picture to take is because our camera is like, I'm looking at the camera here, is actually focused at nothing, but I'm making sure that these two objects are in place. That is a mid-range photograph. Let me give you an example of a mid-range photograph. This would be a mid-range photograph. I'm trying to show that there's a distance between evidence number eight and evidence number six. This is a mid-range photograph. Now the final series of pictures that you're going to take for documentation are your close-ups. You are going to need a scale, something like this. Don't be that person that puts a quarter in there or a pen. That is amateur garbage. It looks like trash and it basically tells the jury that uh, you're incompetent. These are not expensive. Go buy one. They're very, very, very important. Now a close-up photograph is just that. It's a close-up, zoomed in, of the object of your evidence. Now, the important piece here is we want to make sure that we're filling the frame. I'm gonna demonstrate. This is a close-up photograph. We did our overall on mid-range. Now, what's important to note here is that I'm filling the frame. This is not close-up. There's so much wasted. Look at all of that wasted space. We want to fill the frame. Very important. We only need to have the marker, the scale, and our evidence. That is a nice photo. That is what we're looking for. Let me demonstrate why it is so important for you to fill that frame. Okay, let's say this is your camera, and this is the piece of evidence that you want to take a picture of. If you don't fill the frame with your evidence, what happens is you lose all of this, this camera's ability. This is all data. All this is, you've zoomed in now. You've lost all of this ability to, to take a nice picture. That is why you must fill the frame. There's nothing, nothing in the camera that should be in there that you don't want. It's really important to That is to how we document our crime scene. Now remember, we're going to do an overall with our placards and without our placards. We're going to do mid-range and remember standing at the top of the triangle, not linear, and then do a close-up where we fill the frame. And that's how you document a crime scene.